We have uh, another great comic. I know you're gonna love him. Uh, memorable name. Give it up for Chris Petak, everybody. Come on. Hey everybody, uh, I'm Chris Pizak. It's great to meet you. Uh, this is my second show in New York. I think I'm really getting the hang of it. I pushed a guy off the sidewalk earlier so I get to a light. So, you know, it's just it's starting to manifest in me. Uh, I used to have seven sweaters, and now I have one sweater and a girlfriend with six sweaters that look a lot like my old sweaters. <laughs> they look very similar. There's one key difference. Uh, they got the triangle cut out. You know the triangle right here? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I'll go over to her house and I'll find the triangles on the floor just scattered about. And it's like when the kidnapper sends you your kid's finger. Because you might get it back, but it's never going to be the same. Uh, Girlfriends are real. They'll, they'll steal your shit and then they'll flaunt it at you, you know? They'll, they'll brag about it. All this really does is it's made me like whore to my newer sweaters. Like she'll come over and she'll be like, is that a new sweater? And I'm like, yeah. She's like, oh, I'm kind of cold. And I'm like, you're shit out of luck. <laughs> this is not gonna happen the way you want it to, ma'am. Um, I love my girlfriend. We differ on a few key things like that. Uh, I'm a lot better in stressful or gruesome situations. She's not. I found this out about a year ago, last Labor Day, uh, when we were, we were in a front yard, and there's a fence around the yard, and we start to see this raccoon kind of climb the fence and then fall off. Uh, and then he climbs it again, and he falls off on our side, and he starts zigzagging, and that's a red flag. Because we as a society have partitioned raccoons to the nighttime. And when you see him in the daytime, something is wrong. So the raccoons like zigzagging or foaming at the mouth or speaking in Latin. <laughs> Whatever a raccoon does when you know it needs to go. Uh, and I don't quite have the courage to punt it and try and clear the fence. So I call animal control. Uh, it's Labor Day, so they have the day off. So ten minutes later, a police car rolls up. Uh, and that's fine. We can do this. Sure. Uh, so he comes in and he walks up to me and he goes, Is that the raccoon? Yeah, that's the raccoon. <laughs> it's not a large, hairy pile of books or a small, hairy pile of textbooks. <laughs> it's very clearly a raccoon. He's like, Okay, um, I will help you deal with it. And he goes to his trunk. Red flag. <laughs> There's nothing good for raccoons in a cop's trunk. That's not where they keep their giant butterfly net that they're going to take and then take it to a loving and caring family that cares for raccoons. It's a big world. There's got to be one somewhere. Uh, so he goes to the trunk, and he pulls out a rifle. And I'm like, all right, we're doing this. Uh, and he walks over, and he kind of like, Races it. He's like away. The raccoon at this point is just lie down because I think it knows what's coming. Uh, and he's like, I'm gonna shoot it in the heart. <laughs> like it's a goddamn werewolf. <laughs> it's a raccoon. You shoot it pretty. The bullet's like an eighth the size of his body. Just shoot it anywhere. It will die. But he's like, no, I have to shoot it in the heart. Marksmanship is important. Some bullshit. And I'm like, okay, we're doing this. Uh, so he, he aims, and I kind of hear the Call of Duty, like, <laughs> and then he shoots in the leg. Um, and the raccoon just jumps up and starts running back and forth, and foaming at the mouth, and it's like, Curus Dolores Tibi Cubeno, which is the closest Latin translation I could find to you. Shot me in the leg, what the fuck? Uh, he's, run, he's running around. And the cop, he finally settles down, the cop's like, we're gonna try again. And I'm like, why don't you shoot it in the head? And he's like, it's a mess. <laughs> Cleanliness is next to godliness, is next to whoever's the guy killing raccoons. Uh, so he shoots it, and this time I guess he gets his heart, and it's, it's, it's pretty dead. He's like, perfect, help me get the shells. Uh, so I have to walk over and lift it up by its tail while he looks under it for gun shells. Uh, he finds them. 
and he gets his car and he leaves. It's just me and this dead raccoon. <laughs> Which I have like a shitty pale Irish godfather called a hit down upon. And here it is. Uh, so I have to pull it through a trash bag like a giant piece of dog poo. And I pull it through, and the dump is closed because it's Labor Day, so I have to take it home and Febreze it in my garage. And I don't know if you have a fear of death, but if you do, what you should do is Febreze a dead raccoon in a garage for eight hours. Because by the fourth hour, any fear you had is now gone, and you've realized you're just God's janitor. And that's how things are. All right, thanks. I'm Chris.